Hey everybody, Jake Weislier, and today we have a pretty fun video for you. We're gonna be shooting a Hollywood movie scene. First with a one-man crew, and then again with a 10-person crew. Our goal today is to help you understand the value of having a dedicated member on your sets for each job. When you start your own production company and you're given a budget, you want to make money. And so with that budget, the more hats you can wear, the more money you'll take home because you're paying yourself for those roles as opposed to paying other people to do those roles for you. So our main question question today is this, is it worth it? Well, let's find out. Luckily, I have a very talented crew of 10 people and I get to put 100% into my job while they put 100% into their jobs as opposed to somebody having to put 10% into 10 different jobs. I do feel bad for the poor sucker who has to do this all by themselves though. I'm, uh, I got a pretty stacked crew. Jake, Jake, yeah. That's, uh, that's you. Oh, that's you. I do feel bad for the poor sucker who has to do this all by themselves though. Before we dive in, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. We love using their assets to really help our YouTube videos pop and stand out, whether that's with titles, audio tracks, images, After Effects templates, sound effects, graphics, whatever. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution with over 1 million royalty-free assets. With their affordable subscription plans, you can download and try any asset you want. And with their unlimited all-access plan, you can quickly try out multiple options and see what video or sound or title best fits your project. As filmmakers, we're always looking for high quality solutions that will save us time when we need to create a sound or a title or a graphic. And that's the need that Storyblocks saw in the industry and decided to fill. We'll put a link to Storyblocks in the description below or just go to storyblocks.com slash Parker. Thanks again, Storyblocks, for sponsoring today's video. All right, so first things first, what I wanna do is just control my lighting. We have a ton of lighting gear. I'm probably gonna have to simplify a lot of my lighting setup because I don't have any help. I want to make it manageable for myself. So we got the Red Raptor today and we're using Canon CNE glass. There's only really a few shots in this whole scene. There's one wide over the shoulder of Ryan Reynolds focusing on Jennifer Gardner. And then the rest are just a mixture of different tights. We have like a medium tight and then a close tight. So this lighting is kind of tricky, but we can dim all the house lighting. Probably want all the overheads off. The scene's a very moody scene. So in this case, we're kind of shooting on the right side, pointing towards Ryan Reynolds, giving him a lead room and the light's coming from this left, right? And you have practical lights in the shot that kind of give the illusion of, okay, that's where the light's coming from. Same with Jennifer Gardner scene, there's a light in the background, making it look like there's light on her face from that side too. There's also some neon signs that they're using as practical lights so they can shine blue rim light on. All right, so lighting-wise, got the Aperture Nova P300C. Wait, that doesn't go there. Let's throw this bad boy on, it's our softbox. If you've seen the movie, you know, no spoilers here, because it's literally the part of the movie. His future self is meeting his mom at a time when his mom was going through a lot of things. This scene's a very emotional, powerful scene. So we'll let the space for our wide, get that shot. Once that's done, we'll get our tights and then we'll move the lights in closer that are already set up. Actors aren't here yet, so I'm just having a few guys on set stand in for me. Not crew members, just actors standing in. All right, so here's what we're looking with so far. That's our first shot. I'm just holding it handheld for now. So we got we got the lighting matched on Chris's face coming in from the left, but there's still just like a lot of light happening all over the place. I want it to be a little dimmer. Okay, so again, it's still a little too bright and there's just a lot of light spilling. So let me see what it looks like with these lights turned off. It's all Honestly, looks a lot better, but it looks very just like unnatural and keel it. And we have all the we have all the ambient lighting turned off, which I don't want. So I'm gonna put those at the lowest setting. I need a PA so bad. Production assistant, just so I can like stay on camera while someone uh, messes with the lighting for me. Okay, my issue here is that our bartender Chris is really bright. So Chris, all I'm gonna have you do is step. Oh, there's a huge freezer right there. I mean, it looks like at the at that registry there. That look, that works too. You can still kind of like naturally hand her a drink, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna take this light off of Chris. It's spilling. This is looking pretty good. It's not just what's in your frame, it's what's not in your frame. And there's a lot of things in this frame that I don't want to be. Like for example, there's this big ugly cash register that like, again, it might be like practical, but I don't want it. I don't want to see it. I hate it. So we're gonna move it. My only issue with this scene so far is that it's all pretty one tone. There's not a whole lot of color contrast. So like there's really one light, the wood's really warm, the walls are really warm, the ceiling's really warm. So ideally we have like a blue neon light coming through there or a practical light, a blue, something blue, something to, to complement the orange tones. All that's left is I might want a honeycomb on the light. So it just kind of focuses the light more on one line. Which way? Ow! Mother! Let's drag this light. 
Okay, we're looking good, I'm liking this. Chris is now a little too dark because now that light isn't spilling anywhere else. It's focused on Amy, which is what we want. But now Chris looks a little unnaturally dark. We just wanna kind of separate him from the dark background by just subtly giving him that nice light. Might even put it up high. And actually, to add color contrast, I'm gonna cool this off a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Last up, audio. Gotta capture audio. Got the NTG5, and I'll be recording into the Zoom F6, which is what I owned. <laughs> Our mic placement isn't perfect. It's definitely like 24 inches away. You wanna aim for like eight to 12, but for this one shot, it's fine. Again, with the tights, we'll move it in closer. All right, so since we're shooting this scene once without crew members, I told the talent to come camera ready and to bring some wardrobe options. So we got a black and a brown. I like both. That's a good color. Yeah, darker. Let's have you in this one. I'm leaning towards this one. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Brando is our beautiful Ryan Reynolds lookalike here. This is a coat we brought from home. <laughs> this is what he brought. And then I stole this from one of our students who showed up to help on set today. Do you want to see if this fits you? This is actually yeah. the same color, is that okay? Yeah. Throw that on, let's see what it looks like. All right, lighting is done. Audio is done. Actors are set. Wardrobe is done. I'm pretty confident we can get it done in an hour because we have to. So here we go. So we're gonna start with this one wide shot. This is where Adam catches you off guard. So you're trying, you have the, kind of the whole weight of the world on your shoulders right now. You're trying to, to be the perfect mom, also the perfect woman at work. And this is and this is your escape today. You, you didn't want to go home after work. You wanted to just escape for a minute. You remember yourself as that 12 year old kid and how, how much hell you put your mom through. And that's all kind of coming to surface right now in this moment where you see how broken she is and you don't want to give away who you are, but you, you want her to, you want to let her know that she's doing a good job. And I'm going to be monitoring my audio, <laughs> directing and monitoring my camera all at the same time. And I don't have a clapper, so. Camera set, audio speeding, and action. Wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Oh, oh you scared me. <laughs> I was just dropping. More quiet, more subtle, kind of more almost awkward, like, like oh, <laughs> like, okay. let's go again. And three, two, one, action. Oh, oh, you scared me. I was eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I swap lenses to an 85. This next medium tight looks really good. Elbows up. As for camera settings, 24 frames per second, shooting an 8K red raw, ISO 800, F4. Okay, camera's speeding. No, it's not. Now the camera's speeding. Audio is rolling. Uh, my husband had that jacket once. This is classic. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> Freaking love you too. <laughs> you guys are so good. <laughs> okay, so this next shot, a little tricky because I have to tilt the camera up and then pull focus at the perfect time for our actor to deliver his line. Two, one, action. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. Guys, that was perfect. I missed my focus. I hate being one man crew. <laughs> and three, two, one, action. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. More than you know. Perfect! All right, so next up, we're just gonna be changing camera, changing scenes. All right, so we're literally just gonna put this on sandbags because in the shot, the camera's like literally on the bar. But this is our shot. Got some nice foreground of the bar. Got some nice background happening. You're in the Made our adjustments, shooting the scene. Here we go. And quiet on set, three, two, one. You're not doing anything wrong. Oh, you scared me. <laughs> I was eavesdropping. Sorry. Mm, one take wonder, I love it. I love to see it. We're now going to reset, reset lighting, reset camera, reset actors, reset wardrobe. We have our actor going in and get a, put a, getting a beard pasted onto his face, and we're gonna take a lunch break, so here we go. All right, I'm Joseph, I'm gonna be the DP on this. Uh, here's Brett, our gaffer, and so we're gonna get going with it. First thing I'm gonna uh, consider when coming in on a location is just the general ambience of the room. So we're gonna have a discussion about that and see what we can do to get this to look as close to the Adam Project as we can. Let's just this side, let's just start with like the ambience, let's get something that we can do just like. So, uh, a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do some practical bulbs because they had like the sconces in the reference photos. Right. Do you want anything outside the window or do you like it dark? I like it dark. So yeah, I'll get Bracken on camera 
start getting in some settings if you want to start setting up practicals, and then we can chat about dialing them in. So great, cool, we awesome. Don't have, we don't have that much gear, so cool. We're sitting. Uh, in case I'm not here, here's the. Top. We can either do frosted, okay, or we can do these like vintage LED. I feel like this fits the vibe more if we don't have sconces. I agree. My name is Brittany Troche. I'm a hair and makeup artist. I'm a licensed hairdresser, and I've been doing it for 20 years. And I've been working in film and television that long as well. This is wool hair that's been creped and crimped and curled in all sorts of different ways. So it's Weird. wool, like uh, actual wool? Crepe wool. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I'm going to use an extra fine micro tip makeup pencil pen, <laughs> kind of like a marker. And I can fill in any hairs that I'd like a little bit deeper and just paint them on like natural strokes. My name is Shaleen and I'm in charge of wardrobe today. Today we're doing one look for each of the characters. We have to get sizing from everyone well in advance so that we can make purchases that are necessary and make sure it will fit. This one did a lot of lint rolling and wool scraping to clean it up, make it look new again. This one really trying to allow this jacket to tell the story that he's going through. So cleaned up some of the bigger areas, but we're gonna leave some of the wrinkles. So he's got a two to eight split on the bright side of his face. Right. So half under. Let's go, let's go full under. Just right. one one under. Joseph told me what F stop he likes the look of, and using that information and the camera's ISO and shutter speed, I can use that information to get my lights dialed in so that we're perfectly exposed. I don't feel like that's that big. Yeah, I think that's great. Let's you think we could get it hung there, or do you think roughly, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. But yeah, we can put a bottomer on it. Let's, yeah, let's put a bottom on it. He doesn't like how much heat there is here on the top of the counter. So I'm just putting a, a bottomer, a solid. I'm just gonna put that up here-ish. I'm gonna use it to flag the light off of the counter, but we'll still get the light that we want on our talent on the end there. All right, we're about to start shooting. Got our talent. Amy, she looks great. Hair and makeup did a great job. Wardrobe looks great. Got Brando, he looks great as well. Okay, quiet on set. Camera. Camera speed. Sound speed. And action. Wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Oh, you scared <laughs> me. <laughs> Boys always come back for their mamas. Oh, that's nice. Seems like you're speaking from experience. And cut. So we just brought the dolly in over top of the counter so we could get nice and low and in close for her and still do a push in. Let's get you and eye line. Try looking right here at the edge of the map box for me. Awesome, we're gonna make that your eye line. And action. Oh. oh, you scared me. <laughs> I was eavesdropping. Oh. Sorry. My husband had a jacket just like that. Cut. Oh, that was beautiful. Wow. So now, you guys, we are filming the actors' coverage. So we're just gonna be flipping the set, changing the lighting and adjusting, and we're gonna have all hands on deck because we are up against a time limit. Well, it's nice meeting you, and it's almost like you're ending the conversation pretty quickly because you're about to start crying, and because you know you shouldn't be talking to her. And then I'm thinking maybe we even bring the neon sign over here somewhere too. Is the neon sign a hassle to move? It's not bad. Okay. And I'll just make a close shot for the rest of it. That, that line especially is the push in, yeah. Just because that's when the whole, the mood is completely changing. And three, two, one, action. It's really nice talking to you. I'll see you later. Cut. All right, that's a wrap. Hey. Well freaking done. It is so worth it to me 
to have 10 people on set making this happen. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go send these to posts. One scene I'll be editing and coloring myself. One scene we'll have a professional editor and professional colorist take over. And then Parker and I are gonna sit down and watch them back to back and review them and truly decide, is it worth it to have 10 people on your set or can you do it by yourself? So we'll head there now. But you guys, we are now here at home in the studio with Parker Walbeck. Parker, thanks for jumping on today, man. It's so good to be here. I can't wait to see what you've done by yourself and with the crew. Real quick, before we watch these two scenes, let's break down all the roles that we used and how much we spent on each. And then we'll kind of talk about, is what I take home worth it compared to what I paid a 10-man crew? Now, we threw the scene together pretty last minute, you guys. So a lot of these crew members gave us a pretty good deal on their day rates just because they want to be a part of the project. And again, when you have a limited budget, like $10,000 to shoot a professional movie scene, you kind of want to ask for favors and you want to try to be resourceful and any favors people are willing to do take those favors all right so first role was the director which was myself and i charged my day rate of 800 dollars. So that is what i was taking home to direct this 10-man crew then we had our incredible director of photography joseph kitchens who charged 650 for this then we had his first assistant camera which was 400 dollars. we had brett our gaffer who charged 650 doug our sound operator who charged 900 we had Brittany on hair and makeup who charged us 650 we had shaleen on wardrobe who charged 650. We had Kyle Abbott, our producer, kind of threw this whole thing together, who charged $500. We had Jake Pierre Lee, our colorist, who charged $500 as well. And then Doug did our sound design in post for $1,000. And we had an editor, Cayman, who edited this for 50 bucks an hour, and he spent four hours on it, which is $200 total. And then we had three actors, Brando, the actor, Amy, the actress, and Chris, the bartender, and that cost $1,200. We spent about 250 bucks on props, whether that was, you know, little things in the background or clothes or things on the table, things like that. And then because we had a whole crew of like 10, 15 people on set, we had to pay for food to feed everybody, and that cost $100. And then the venue itself, the set, the bar we shot at charged us $1,300 for the entire day. So that totals to $8,000. $850. So after my fee of $800, we have 300 bucks about left over for my production company. And then compare that to the one man crew, because I was wearing every hat, my take home was $7,400 because all I'm paying for are the actors, the set, and the food. We'll determine, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And where maybe, depending on Jake's skill set specifically, is he good enough where it's like, oh, you probably could have just done that on your own. Again, that depends on you personally and where your skill sets lie. So, and I'll just point out that we just barely launched a new website called vidlead.com that allows you to search for talented people around the globe to include on your productions. You can search by type of video, category of video, the budget you have, and you can find talented people to fill in roles that you need on your next production and vice versa. And so it's a great new resource that we've recently just launched and are starting to build up. All right, we will start with the one man scene, my first scene. Again, this is before we shot the 10 man scene, so I didn't get any inspiration from these professionals. This is just raw talent coming out of myself. So here we go. <laughs> All Jake. Here we go. <laughs> All me. Wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Oh, oh you scared me. I was eavesdropping. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, you're right. Boys are, teenage boys are horrible. Like living with a urinal cake that yells at you. <laughs> Some good looking actors you I'll got. I'll tell you something. Right? Boys always come back for their mamas. I thought that was Thor. <laughs> Seems like you're speaking That's what we all kept saying. I am. My husband had that same jacket. It's a classic. Yeah. It's really nice chatting with you. I'll see you later. Hey, he doesn't hate you. He loves you. More than you know. That door though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> nice work, Jacob. Thank you, thank you. Very I'm pretty impressed. proud of that, to be honest. You Very guys. impressed. It was a stressful shoot. On his own, <laughs> shooting a movie, one there man. Is. So no one was helping you. We had we had Nate and our my friends, like our BTS guys, were on set, you guys, and uh, they wouldn't even help me move lights around. <laughs> Nope, you're on your own. This is you. So I was playing on honeycomb grids, a lot of things I'm not used to doing, and I was just, okay, and this is all me. Good, it was good for him. Built character. Okay, 
All right, let's see the 10-man crew now. Just wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Oh, you scared me. <laughs> I was eavesdropping. Uh, yeah. Sorry. You're right. Teenage boys are horrible. It's like living with a urinal cake that yells at you. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Boys always come back for their mamas. That's nice. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. I am. My husband had a jacket just like that. It's a classic. Yeah. It was really nice chatting with you. I'll see you later. Hey. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. More than he knows. Well done, Ten Man Crew. Huh. Amazing. Well, Much better door sound effects. <laughs> better on the, the door closing sound. Good job, Doug. Way to make that a little more subtle. <laughs> no, that was that was awesome. They were both really good. What'd you think? Okay, so my initial reaction. I'm just gonna go through my brain, what I'm thinking as I'm comparing the two. I've watched them side by side a few times now. And the first thing I notice off the bat is the camera movements. And that's really hard to incorporate when you're a one-man band, especially when you're on a tight timeline, you only have so many hours with the actors. That's one of the first things to go out the windows. We don't have time, set up a tripod, let's get the shots, let's focus on the content. Jake tried to fake it with some you know, digital zoom in here and there. He kind of sold it a little bit in post, but you just can't replicate right. actual camera movements. So that was one thing right away where I thought, okay, production value is already up because of the camera movements. Next thing for me was sound. I could hear the difference. Doug is just a professional. He does this on TV shows, feature films, and that's not something Jake specializes in. And so that's definitely an area where Jake should hire somebody out if and until he becomes a lot better at that. Sound is one of those things that I always say is is half the viewing experience, and that is, in my opinion, an area that you should spend that money. Jake actually did a great job lighting. I didn't think anything super negative of the lighting. And so that's probably an area where, hey, if we're on a tight budget, I, I can do the lighting. It's not ideal, but that is another hat I can play. Yeah, the, the biggest thing I noticed watching these back is just color contrast that Brett gave the set. He added that tungsten lighting coming from a few different angles, yeah. where as I just, I didn't have that. Mine just was a lot more two-tone than, than Brett's. I will say, Joe Joseph as well, I liked his lens choice better than Jake's. Throughout most of it, I liked the wider look. It looked like Joseph was primarily on the 35 and 50, and Jake was more towards the 85, and especially that last shot. The 135 to me was just too tight. I felt like it was it was too much in their grill. Pros and cons, there's no wrong or right way to do this, but I did like Joseph's lens choice as the director of photography better throughout. As far as color goes, honestly, I thought both colors were great, but overall, I probably like Jake Weisler's color a little bit better. Again, personal preference. Moving on to hair and makeup. You can tell that hair and makeup were involved on the 10-man crew. Especially trying to match the exact look of Ryan Reynolds and Jennifer Gardner. I don't even know how Brittany was able to give Amy bangs, but she did. If you look at the beard of my scene, versus the 10 oh, man yeah. scene. The now, beard. now that you pointed out, I'm like, oh man, cause he looks completely different. You may not even know what you're seeing, but when somebody who's done it points it out, you're like, oh wow, that's amazing. So there you have it. That was Jake Weisler versus himself with a crew. <laughs> and uh, it was fun. I thought he did great on both, but in my opinion, it came together better with the 10 man crew. It should have, as you have a lot more help in that regard. And like I said, it is important to learn how to do both when the occasion arises and that's why we built full-time filmmaker it's a 600 video course that teaches you how to do both if you have to be a one-man band and I also show you in depth how to hire out crew members and work with them to produce something of higher value so that you can be profitable and make money with video that's all we got for you guys hopefully you enjoyed this one man versus ten man challenge if you have any further questions for us please let us know 